LLC, Pest Geek Podcast, Living the Wildlife Podcast, Stephen M. Van Tassel, or their or his affiliates are not responsible for followers' use of the information provided here. Hi, everyone. Stephen Van Tassel here, wildlife control consultant, bringing another episode of Living the Wildlife as part of the Pest Geek Podcast family. Do take a few moments, if you would, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. And of course, you can always reach out to me at wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. That's wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. Yes, even criticisms. We'll take that too. Perhaps you have an, an idea for a new show. Perhaps you have a comment you'd like to make. Would love to hear from you again. That's wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. You can also get my podcast through Rumble if you don't want to deal with YouTube. Just go to wildlifecontrolconsultant.com there at the Rumble site. Just put that search term in and my podcast will show up there as well. So we're glad to have you on board. We are very pleased to have a guest today. Of course, his name is Dominic Rubino from 10X BLT, which That's is an right. interesting, uh, interesting title. He is the head business coach of that particular company. And he has some experience both in being a contractor. He was a painter in the past. And so we're going to talk today about helping you run your business so your business isn't running you. I know when I was in doing field work, uh, I was not running my business. My business was running me and it's running hard. me. And so ultimately I, I did not survive. So uh, we don't want that to happen to you. And he's going to talk about some things that's going to help you get over that and how he can help you do that both for the services that he he provides so uh dominic welcome to the wildlife living the wildlife podcast yeah i'm excited to be here thank you very much hi everybody uh, well, so tell us a little about your yourself how you got into this side of the business and then get into what you can do for our our audience yeah but gee you know how i got into this is gray hair and wrinkles <laughs> <laughs> that's it okay <laughs> no 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 i've been a business coach since the year 2000 okay a very long time and i came out of the corporate world and before that i was a, a trade contractor mm -hmm. right trade as, as you mentioned i did painting and small renovations a lot of the things actually that the professionals here would do right. when you guys are patching a hole that a raccoon made or you know that little stuff sometimes right. i had to do as a painter as well because okay. The homeowner says, well, you're up there with the ladder anyway. Might as well do it. Yeah. Might as well do it. Yeah, because you and, can't get uh, anybody else to do it. Cause no, yeah, because I don't have a ladder, right? <laughs> but they still complained about the price. Of course. It makes no sense. Absolutely. Um, and of course, I was a kid, so I got pushed around a lot in okay. on pricing, on um, on callbacks, on neighbors saying that I oversprayed their house and now I had to cut wax their vehicle. You guys might not have to deal with that, but you probably have that neighbor thing where why are you removing that beautiful animal? Yeah, and right. you know, you're trying to do a job. Uh, you're trying to provide a service. You're trying to do it ethically and within the you know the the state federal rules. But somebody has an opinion, and as you know, opinions are like elbows. That's right. Everybody's got yeah. about two of them. Two of them. Oh, well, there you go. That's yeah. that's a clever that's a clever phrase. Yeah, there's a there's a worse phrase, but we, I don't uh, I don't cuss. So okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got into this, you got into being a business coach. So how does your company differentiate from other forms of business coaches that are out there? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. So <clears throat> today I want to talk about everything that has to do with the business of business. And that's really where we stand out. There's lots of business coaches out there, Stephen, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. You have to go find the one that resonates with you. But some people are going to listen to this interview and hate me. And that's fine. You know, you're still going to get great info. But you're going to leave it going, I'm never talking to Rubino or any of his crew. And other people will say, well, that was interesting. Maybe I'll find out more. So everybody has to follow the path they want, first of all. But what makes us different is we're business owners who also do business coaching. And that's very different. And can I tell you a little bit about my professional oh, background? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So almost none of it is pest control unless you count my house. <laughs> Okay. So I'm under constant <laughs> attack by starlings, rats, which makes me feel bad, by the way. Yeah. I don't like admitting I have rats because yeah. it makes me feel like I have a dirty house, which we don't. Right. You don't have to have a dirty, it depends what part of the country you're in. But like with California, yeah. it's normal for roof rats to be roaming through people's backyards. It's, oh it's my gosh. perfectly normal. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, yeah. we've got it. And I live near a park when, and the park yeah. is across the street from my house. Right. So Pacific okay. Northwest, I'm up in the, okay. the pack Northwest. Yeah. So we've got starlings, we've got rats, we've got raccoons. Mm -hmm. uh, from time to time we have coyotes. I'm not sure. sure if the coyotes eat the raccoons or not. I know they, you know, 
the, the raccoons might they, win in that they, fight. They, but... they might. No, it depends on how how yeah. skilled the coyote would be. But yeah, there's yeah. raccoons would typically climb a tree if they can find it fast enough. Sure, and get out of there. And and then the worst pest we have in my neighborhood are the neighbors who feed said animals. Yes, yes, yeah, feeders. And so I have to deal with that. And, and then, you know, we have bears, but uh, not so much in my part of town, but you drive about 20 minutes and there's bears. There's actually cougars in my town. And so, but we don't deal with those, you know, anyways. Um, so my background though is I started in painting and then I, I, I was, I sucked at business. I was horrendous at it. And the worst day of my life was a day that I, uh, I had an anniversary with my girlfriend, you know, this is college, right? Mm -hmm. Really nice girl. I had this 77 Dodge tradesman van. If you saw it now, you'd bring your children inside. It was a horrible looking van, right? It was just horrible. And, um, it broke down on the job site and it was our anniversary. And you probably already know where the story's going. Mm. I didn't have the money to pay to fix the van. I didn't have the money to take her to dinner. So that night she picked me up from the house we were painting and she took me to dinner and she paid. Wow. And I got to tell you, I felt so small, like, like, I don't, I mean, I don't want to overshare, share, but I felt like right. a failure, right? You know, it just wasn't, I was working so hard. I was getting referrals. People loved me. I knew how to paint a house. I thought I could do it efficiently and make money at it, but I I could not I could not rub two cents together to save my life and something was wrong. So my uncle, I'm, I come from an Italian family, so my uncle's, you know, he's got one of those Italian uncle Giulio. Okay. I used to work for him as a framer. And I I'm like, maybe I'll go ask my uncle cuz you know, he must know about business. He's a framer. Mm -hmm. And so he started asking me all these questions about my business and they all had to do with numbers. Like how much did this cost you? How much are you paying for that? What's your overheads? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Now, right, right. my favorite uncle turns to me and he goes, look, if you don't know your numbers, you're just a dummy with an opinion. Ooh, yeah. Ouch. How's that? He's still my favorite yeah. uncle, but yeah, man, he hit well, me in the head. That was, that was some hard truth. That was some hard truth there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I went on to take a bunch of business courses and, um, but, but entrepreneurship courses, not at school. Mm-hmm. What I took at school has nothing to do with anything. And I, I turned around a business that had previously just been a side company. And in four years, I got it up to 120 million in sales and I sold it. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you got okay. my attention. So there you go. Yeah. So the, what, what we're talking <laughs> about, you know, hopefully we talk about some of these things here today. Yeah. You're, you're going to be surprised. It has more to do with discipline and mindset okay. than it does anything else. So discipline and mindset. So let's unpack that a little bit, because um, your yeah. uncle mentioned the the numbers, and and I I'm totally on board with them because that was certainly something that I struggled with that I yeah. that I did. We all do. We all do. And so if you're so in terms of the discipline and mindset, would you say that that's what would be some of those numbers that someone who's you know they're new in their business or maybe they're under five years you know that five year break that's supposed to be like a, such a cliffhanger yeah, there yeah. what what numbers should they should they begin to pay attention to straight off like you know what's the the quick the quick route here that they need to start with yeah this is probably going to surprise you because it surprised the heck out of me but it's actually not the accounting numbers like the B, the P L and the balance sheet those oh, really? are they are numbers but right. those aren't the operational numbers oh, and okay. what took me a long time to figure out is that my accountant's job is to reduce the amount of taxes i pay right my job as a business coach is to increase the amount of profit you make and so i, I care about different numbers i care about the things my uncle julio asked me about i didn't know at the time because i'm a dummy right right uh or as he said what did he say? i'm a dummy with an opinion um I have to know how many leads, how many people called me that month, mm -hmm. how many of those people became estimates, right. how many of those estimates became jobs. And this is really what he was pushing for is a number that I now call acquisition cost. What does it cost me to buy a customer from the market? And that's all, all these people that, you know, oh, I do online marketing just for pest control, just for wildlife. Okay. They're selling you customers. You're going right. to pay X amount of thousands of dollars to run ads on Facebook or wherever you do it. They're trying to help you buy customers. It doesn't matter if you do no marketing at all or you spend millions on marketing and you still have a cost to buying right. customers. That's a, right. Those kind of numbers, we don't think about. They don't teach us in school right. at all. And so that's those are the kind of numbers we have to follow. And so... As I as we before the show started, we talked about the time constraints that are on our 
wildlife control operators. So yeah. how, what would be the way that they need to generate that? Because they already have, I mean, paperwork was something that I certainly hated to do. And people that get into wildlife control are not known to be, you know, if they wanted to read books and stare at a computer all day, they would have gone to a different career path. Yeah, you'd be an insurance agent, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. So this yeah. is where, so how do, how do they gather that information to get the kind of answers that you're looking to the questions that you're asking so that it's, a, that it's efficient. Is there a software? Is it, can they do it freehand? What is the way that yeah. they would do that? So first, keep in mind the numbers I just told you are, are a couple of numbers. Right. But no, you, no, I got you that. Want, if, yeah. you, if you want to know all of the numbers, then here's, and this is business coach talking. So I'm going to talk to everybody as if we're having a coffee and sure, we're huddled absolutely. over a table and nobody's mm -hmm. listening and we're working at it, right? Get a blank piece of paper and a pen. Okay. Leave the office. Get a cup of coffee. Face the corner at a really nice coffee shop and just sit down on your own. Don't let anybody bug you. Mm -hmm. And write down your customer journey. Like, how does the customer deal? What You know, you would call it the sales flow. Like, I get a phone call or somebody contacts me by email or text, right? An HOA calls me. It doesn't matter. Right. But then I return that phone call. Then I go have a meeting. Then I give them an estimate. Then I do the job. Put all those things down in a list. My friend, you now have numbers attached to each of those things. Right. Your number is going to be different than mine. And, you know, we can talk about the magic number. Sure. Everybody has a magic number. Um, but now you've got your numbers. Those are the numbers to track. And at the very, very, very bottom of that list is when you send the invoice to the customer and you get paid, hopefully right at the same time or just before. Right. Yeah. After that come the financials, the balance sheet and the profit and loss. Okay. And that's the numbers we tend to, we forget. I'm going to say this and I don't care if there's any accountants listening. Accountants are not good business people. They are good at counting. They're called accountants, not business people. So they're good at counting. They're good at tax mitigation. They're good at being very afraid of the sky's going to fall on their heads and, and telling you what already happened because they're accountants. Right, right. If you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to look towards the future, if you want to build your own, and, and you don't have to build a thousand vehicle fleet right, right, right. of pest yeah. control, you can have one or just you, it doesn't matter, but you still have to have some future vision you're working towards, something that pulls you more than you getting pushed. And those numbers help. So, yeah, that sounds very, you know, it, very straightforward. And then that per, I would suspect as the person's going through this list, they probably could find a couple places where they can make that process less painful for themselves and the customer. Yes. Yeah. Well, can <laughs> okay. I interrupt you for a second? Sure, no, right ahead. I'm, I'm foaming. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, I got to say this. You know how you mentioned now two or three times that you get pulled ahead of yourself. Like it's so busy. You're always busy. You're running, right? Yeah. So at the very top of that process, you get a phone call and I'll just say phone call, whatever. Somebody right. contacts you. Right. And then, oh, I'm, oh my God, I got a lead. And you turn to your wife or your spouse and you say, honey, I got a lead. It's an hour away. Can you take the kids to baseball? I got to get this job. And now you drive an hour there, do whatever you got to do, the little dance, which we don't want to do. Then you drive an hour back and maybe you got the job. But what happens is your kid is at bat, yep. finally hit the hit and dad wasn't there or mom. I'm just, you know, just sure. neurosizing. Him. Sure. And this is where, when I see those numbers, I have to realize, hey, I don't go on every service call. Everybody, you can ask for me, but I might not be available. And I have a service area that I work within. And I have service times that I work within. Uh, I got ahead of steam here, Stephen. Can I keep going? Keep going. Absolutely. Nope. So I, th I think you're in Montana, right? I am. Yeah. So I've, ha I've had lots of ranching buddies from my past in business. And okay. one of the best lines I ever heard was from a rancher friend of mine, Aaron Collins. He goes, look, Dom, if you stand for nothing, you're going to fall for anything. Right. If I accept somebody saying, you know, come by and look at our raccoon problem, whatever the pest issue sure, is. Sure, sure. And I just run off as if they're the most important person in the world. I'm not doing a service to me, my business, or my family. And so that's time to pump the brakes and see, does that customer qualify to be your customer? So you qualify the customers. So you have you can help those <clears throat> wildlife control operators and pest control operators help them go through that process and, ref and fine tune that process. Now. Right. Because I, I think yeah. it's a fair question. You know, are you making money on that call? I mean, I think some of the problems yeah. was is that you're like, 
I knew I was making money on a job. I'll just use myself, but you know, some jobs I lost, I, I'm sure I lost money on and I shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. And, and I would wonder how often that's occurring for us in, in our industry. Yeah. I mean, I just, here's a funny example, but it's painful. It's only funny when we're talking about it here. Right. Somebody listening is going to be banging their head on the steering wheel as they say it. Well, but we, right. We, right? we want it to be less painful for them than but, it yeah. was for us. <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway. Right. You, you know, I like to joke. You can already tell. Oh, I like no, to absolutely. Fun yeah, but that's fine. We'll look at the pricing structure of a company and they'll say, Dom, you know what? Our pricing is solid. We're very confident in our pricing. And, you know, we'll start to pick it apart. I'm not trying to be smarter. I'm trying to be very, very curious. That's my job as a business coach to be very curious and draw the question or draw the answers out with good questions. And so this is a typical thing that we find is, okay, you've got great pricing. Tell me how you come up with your price. And so there's obviously formulas for that, but we're ahead of ourselves a bit. Yeah. And they'll say, well, you know what? We're so good. We charge mileage. We charge mileage if they're outside of our zone. I'm like, well, that's fantastic. But then I come back with a question. Don't you pay your guys by the hour? Now that doesn't seem like a big deal, but if I saved you 10 bucks a day and you work 250 days a year, you just saved that much money. And this game is a game of inches. Just like it is, I, I imagine when you're trying to eliminate pests, you try the first things and then you get tighter and tighter and tighter in your controls. That's the same thing in business. You just keep at it, get tighter and tighter and tighter. Yeah, so I like your you know, you're going to help this, you're going to help this individual. You're going to start qu helping them question what they're doing so that you can find, hopefully together, find a better way of doing it. So they either save money or make mm -hmm. more money or a right. combination of both. And ultimately their profit is greater. And then their accountant can yell at them about how many taxes they're paying. Oh, well, that's the worst <laughs> problem in the world, isn't it? <laughs> that's right. And again, there comes the accountant after the, the horse is out of the barn. That's right. Hey, hey okay. hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, which is so fine. So in terms of the process, so someone calls you, how does the how does the process start when they're if they call you and say, you know, I I like Dom, I like the chemistry, because that's kind of what you mentioned earlier, the chemistry with the coach. I'd like to explore this. I need someone to help me walk through this process. What is the process for starting that relationship with you? You know, uh, at least for us, we like to get to know people. And mm -hmm. so as you know, I have a podcast. It's called Profit Tool Belt. Profit so Tool can... Belt, folks. Yeah, there you go. The Check Profit Tool Belt podcast. Yeah. yeah. Or as my really good friends like to bug me when I show up with my branded Profit Tool Belt vest. Mm -hmm. uh, is that Profit Tool Belt? Are you selling leather belts? Like, no. <laughs> no, no, no. They they love to take apart my brand names, but that's that's mm -hmm. what good friends do. Um, and then, you know, I, I run free webinars, free trainings. Okay. So you should you should go consume everything you can of mine. And if you're still not sick of it, then send me a text or call me. That's, I would say, do your research, right? Yeah. So this is, so they can get a sense of what your philosophy is, your style is by listening to your podcast. You have an idea of how many shows they probably person should listen to to kind of get the feel to say, yeah, this is a fit I need to, to yeah. go through. Have you ever I don't No, I mean, you, you kind of know, you know, first of all, we work with people who are, who have the right mindset. Okay. It has, it has more to do with mindset than it has to do with the size of your company. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a gentleman we work with in the Northeast who is a one-man um, uh, uh, so handyman. Sorry, he's a handyman. He came to us. He was doing a couple hundred grand a year. But he was the guy I was talking about. Couldn't get to his daughter's baseball game. Oh. And then when he did, she said this to him, Dad, how come you're always on your phone? Oh. Right? And that's, is that what you want? Is that why yeah. you had kids? Right. So anyways, we had to get in there and help him put systems in place. And those systems were around putting the, having the right vision for where he wanted to take the company, which was his vision. It's not ours. We don't give him right. a vision. We right. ask the questions to get his vision. And then you build the company around that. Well, he's about to sell that company and wow. not for nothing. That's yeah. And I, I let me do a sidebar here. I think it's so important for the audience to understand that your goal, if you're not handing your company off to your children, and unfortunately, so many children are too, let me just put this bluntly, too stupid 
not to see the opportunity because of the family issues that they have or whether they're going to find their own way, blah, blah, blah. But nevertheless, you want to be a get to a place where you can sell your company. That's the goal. And, and so, because that's what you're building. So you're not only making money for a living, but you're building something that you can get a big cash infusion yeah. from. But Thanks. do talk a little bit more about that. What are some of the qualities of that mindset? Because that's something you've mentioned a couple of times already. And what are some of the elements of that mindset that you someone know, needs to have? I've been thinking a lot about this lately because I, I asked that same question on my side. We're always thinking about how people think, mm-hmm. right? In In business, I want to think about my customer's conversation at the kitchen table because that's where I want to have the impact so that they make the decision to work with us. Right? The mindset, it, it, you're going to find it so interesting. And I'm trying to come up with, I'm trying to get data for this. I think if anybody's listening to a podcast on improving their business, they already have that. Like they're already facing North. Their feet and their nose are facing the right direction. Now, whether they all want to do it, it's, you know, it's totally different. But who is... Who, who would benefit from coaching is somebody who's curious about it first because you can't force somebody to get coached. Right. Do you remember putting your kids in little leagues or in entry soccer and there's there's one kid, he or she can't wait to score. There's another kid that's making little castles out of gravel and sitting there and <laughs> spinning circles. It's super cute, but they don't want to be a soccer player. No. <laughs> right? And then you got one kid, he's like, I'm the greatest four-year-old soccer player in the world. Well, the other 19 kids are just standing there. Of course you are. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I I actually believe that there is a, a, a temperament for someone to be an entrepreneur. I think that not everyone is wired that way. At least yeah. as I'm speaking for myself, I don't see myself as an entrepreneur. I I see myself as the second in command of a company. And the problem is, is no one hires the second in command. <laughs> uh, so that's certainly a yeah. mistake on my part. But the I do think, because when I see people that have been successful in their business, um, other than, you know, just happenstance, sometimes people just get lucky, right? They're not really that skilled. But I see, see people in, in wildlife control where they were able to bring their business to a place where they were able to hire people. They were able to build a team build a team yeah. and have that and that's a different skill not everyone has that some people are so i gotta Steven, control right. everything they're not me and they're always going to stay small and that takes a special skill and i think there's a you have to have some grit to go through the agony at times for being an entrepreneur because customers can be brutal to you and it's tough yeah so this goes to your other question is who who benefits from coaching and yeah. and again i don't not that I don't care if somebody works with me. I'm just saying in general, mm-hmm. is somebody who realizes that listening to this show that realizes, hey, I'm a little bit different. Yeah. I don't talk the same as everybody else. If I try to talk to my employees about things, they don't care. They're there for the hour or the salary. And quite often we get business owners who have this burning desire, but feel like they're alone. Mm-hmm. How come I'm the only one who wants this business to succeed? And, and who do I talk to that also wants that? Well, of course, you have, you get somebody on your team like that, or you start to hang out with other people, which is why you would join an industry association, like in your industry, right? right? You go, you go hang out with those people and you leave energized. Right. And that's what, what obviously business coaching is a lot more formal than that. But that's what you do is you get around people who are also forward facing, who are saying, they're asking the big questions and the big questions, you know, you're asking the big question. When your question starts with how can I or what if? Now, I stole that from Michael Gerber's E-Myth Revisited, and I've been using it for 23 okay. years. Great, great book. Oh, great Stephen, book. I call it the most painful book I ever read. Yeah, no. Because I... you got to go back to the year 2000 in my small little townhouse. I'm engaged to my beautiful wife. Well, at yeah. the time, I was she was just my girlfriend. Engaged, right? yeah. But um, I would read that book, and I'm pacing up and down the, the, the living room. She's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, this book is so good. But I would read two pages and close it and smack it against my head. <laughs> and then it open again. I'm like, ah, I'm not doing this. And I'm not kidding. That book is seminal. Like it is, yeah, it, no, it really so. is. It, it really cuts to the core of the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. And if we right. stay in that technician, like the guy baiting the traps, yep. you're limiting yourself in the company. If you're listening to a show like this, you're in entrepreneur mode. How can we do mole control? How can we understand 
you know, how can we have better gloves for bats? I was looking sure. at some of your previous episodes. Yeah. Those are yeah. the big questions that a leader has to tackle. Yeah. And I think that's, and I think that's the challenge, you know, the transitioning from those different roles takes, it take, takes some pain and a, in a, in a, in a, a comfortableness with un- being uncomfortable yeah, that not everyone true. can transition through. I mean, I think that's certainly the case for me, uh, which I guess the benefit would be know your limitations. That can be important, you know, self-discovery, but the, but that e-myth book I think is imperative for people to read. And I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. That book was like, I didn't re- I haven't read the revised version, but the old one it was like, Oh my gosh, how many mistakes did I make? It was, it was like, this was one, awful. For me, it was one per two pages. And that's why I kept uh, smacking myself in the head with it. I think I read it after I f- sold my company. So it was, uh, so I, I think it was more, so for me, it was reflecting back to what I did wrong, <laughs> did this wrong, did this wrong. You just, you just reminded me from jumping from the e-myth to what people really want. Not everybody wants more money. Mm-hmm. So if you're, if you're not driven, if you're listening to this show, for instance, going, oh, that Rubino guy's cool. Steven's got a good perspective, but I don't really want more money. I'm happy. Mm-hmm. It actually goes to this crazy name that we have. Why is it called 10X Built? BLT. Well, as as you can already tell, I like to goof around, even though I'm as serious as sin. Like I'm right. very serious, but I like to laugh along the way. Well, built is comes from people don't want money. They want what they can do with the money. Now, on the serious side, you want to take care of your mom because she's sick and she took care of you her whole life, and she's in a shared room in a hospital, and you want better for her. On the goofing around side, the B and the L and the T is because you want to drive a bigger boat to a nicer lake with a newer truck. BLT. Right. Right. It's not, it's not, I'll give you an example. There's a guy named Dan who worked with us and he came in one of our, cause we do coaching programs, right? He came in this like, put your toe in the water kind of program. Yeah. And which is fine. It's, you know, people, you choose your, your experience, right? This wasn't what he came in with, but he got on, on the coaching call one day and he goes, guys, my daughter just needed braces. And I paid seven grand by writing a check. And he like, he, he was standing so tall because he paid for his daughter's braces. He's just a dad. He just happens to be a tradesman, yeah. but he's a dad. And that's, you know, so when you go, you know, who does coaching and what's the, you know, what do I get? I, you tell me, is it taking care of your mom? Is it taking care of your daughter? Is it being there in the stands without your phone on so you can watch your, your, your son or your daughter, right? Yeah, no, there's dignity, there's dignity in work and knowing that you've, you've built something for yourself and you've, there's dignity in that. It's just like whenever, just when you're a kid and you brought your drawing home to mom, you made that for your mom, right? right? It's something you created. You and, created and it. You're a craftsman. You, you did it, right? Yeah. And I think there's, and I think there's a lot of value. Yeah. Cause I, sometimes people, I like the way you phrase that. And because I do think sometimes people get hung up on money and it's not really about the money. It's, it's what they want to do with the money. And for some people it may just be the flexibility uh, to, to be with their, to be with their kid. They don't have a boss. I mean, I had, I had a friend of mine. Uh, he said, I'm, he sold his company. He was pretty successful, worked for somebody else and finally left that. And he, I said, well, why did you leave? You, you got this other job with the new company. And he said, he said, I realized I was just a bad employee. He couldn't take orders. <laughs> yeah. I'm the worst employee in the world. <laughs> he couldn't take orders. And so I he's he's doing fine. He realized he just wasn't gonna be he couldn't take orders. So I it, so obviously for him being being self-employed was an important part of him man, managing his own destiny. Was that's it? right. His identity is wrapped up in I am a self-made person. And yeah. for a lot of us, that's it, right? Well, that comes That brings us to the end of part one of my interview with Dominic Rubino of 10XBLT uh, Business Coaching. So you can learn more about him at 10XBLT.com. And he also has, of course, a podcast that's at ProfitToolBelt.com to learn more about him. But I hope you stay tuned for next week to have part two of my interview with the last part of my interview with him and he'll also have a little bonus there where he'll have a phone number where you can text him and get access to some of his free webinars about helping you become better at your business as he does help 
entrepreneurs with business coaching. Of course, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you are already an entrepreneur. So uh, you might want to check them out or listen to our next podcast. You've been listening to Living the Wildlife as part of the Pest Geek Podcast family. My name is Stephen Van Tassel. I'm your host, and hopefully you'll take a few moments and subscribe to the channel. And Ring the bell so you can stay tuned to all of our episodes. You can also reach me at, or get my podcast, I should say, at Rumble. You just go under Wildlife Control Consultant to download my podcast there as well. If you want to reach out to me, you can reach me at wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com, wildlifecontrolconsultant at gmail.com. would love to hear from you, advice, tips. Perhaps you have a show that you'd like me to do or interview. I'd love to hear from you or and even criticisms will take that as well so you've been listening to living the wildlife why do we want you to live the wildlife because we want you to live the wildlife not be the wildlife take care everybody